This topic might be sensitive for some viewers. So I think it's time. It's time. I feel I need to make this for myself. I think I need to make it for the miscommunication that I receive from a lot of the fans and um, people in general. So I'm going to go ahead and just start because this story can go so into depth that I'd rather just keep it short and get to the point. You guys know I'm a huge wrestling fan and I kind of stick more with the whole pop culture celebrity gossip and I never really intertwine my love and passion for wrestling. Uh, but this story is very disturbing as it involves Eddie Guerrero, the legend Hall of Famer. It involves his daughter. A few days ago, Eddie Guerrero's daughter, Cheryl Lynn, posted to her TikTok a story about when she was essayed. And the person that she was essayed by was her stepdad. As know, before Eddie Guerrero's passing, he was married to Vicky. Vicky remarried in 2015. The situation that Cheryl Lynn is talking about happened in 2020. This all went down allegedly during a family cruise. Vicky has responded to the allegations, and let me just tell you guys, it was very disturbing what she said. I can't imagine having a mother say those kind of things that she said about Cheryl Lynn. I'm going to go ahead and just tell you guys, it was very harsh what she said. She basically claimed her daughter had men in the room, and they had to find her a Plan B pill in the Bahamas. She also said she's going to see her daughter in court the next time she talks to her. Very nasty, very ugly. Go ahead and take a look at these next screenshots. We can confirm that the heel character or the bad guy that she played on TV is really who she is. Lynn talked about how basically her mother and her sister has abandoned her, which Vicky confirmed she's not talking to her, as well as something that I noticed Vicky said that her relationship has been bad with Cheryl Lynn for the last 15 years. If you guys remember, Eddie Guerrero passed away in 2005. Cheryl Lynn was only 10 years old around that time, roughly. What I'm going to do is play the full video from Cheryl Lynn and let you know what she exactly said, as well as the response from her sister, Shao. My family is well known, um, obviously, and I'm literally it's been two years and I have been so quiet about so much. And if anybody said anything cool, if not, I'm pretty sure they're not because it makes them look really bad. And I have protected them for so long that I feel nobody is protecting me. So I need to start protecting me. So a lot of people ask me if I talk to my mom or my sister. And the answer is no. Now let me go ahead and rephrase this or tell you, I would love to talk to my mom and my sister. I really would. I need them. And I don't need a lot. And I don't need anybody else other than my family, right? Hmm. This is why I didn't want to make this because I'm so tired of crying. But I also feel like this is just going to help me not feel like I'm keeping this giant secret. Um. Okay. So come 2020, right before COVID, there was a cruise that my family had went on. And basically on this cruise, um, I got sexually assaulted. And the unfortunate part is that it was by my stepdad. Yeah, it was by my stepdad. And was I the only one? No, but that's not my business to put their story out there. But it happened to me. And the fact that I protected somebody that doesn't clearly give a shit about me is beyond me. Um, but hey, you know, growth and maturity, right? Um, there's, there will, I lived with them, so I, I didn't know what to do. 
that happened. I was living with them. Then COVID happened. Everything shut down. And I basically just became mute. I feel I'm very numb. Um, and I got, I worked my ass off to get out of there and get my own apartment, which I got in September of 2020, that same year. I, I really did everything I could to not only protect my mom, but keep the peace and to just get on with my life. Um, basically fast forward, maybe like the following year, um, when I got injured with my knee, um, my mom was the only one out here in Houston that's family. And she was helping me with that. And there was basically a conversation. And granted, let me tell you, I have told my mom how uncomfortable I am with him after it happened. And basically she was always telling me it was a mistake. It's not who he is. Um, just kind of like, I'm sorry, that's not my problem type deal. And I never really felt like she protected me. Um, so when I got injured, money was a thing with my surgery and having help with that, blah, blah, blah. Moral of the story is she thought I owe this man everything. I owe him respect. I owe him just all this stuff. And <laughs> last time I checked, anybody that handles me like that physically doesn't get my respect. Um, and I really tried to tell my mom that but she took it as a way of disrespect to her and her relationship and that meaning she doesn't she doesn't want anything to do with me if i disrespect her relationship i did care about you know my mom's career and all that but seeing my own mom be okay with abandoning me and i get people need time to heal if they're going through something but it's been two years and I've almost going on three and I've been blocked. Like I can't even call my mom and she's the closest family I know to me. Um, I haven't been able to call her for anything creature <laughs> creatures right here, like smelling the phone. Um, and it's been fucking hard. My sister felt like she had, did not want to be in the middle and I, I would lean on my sister because that's my sister. Like, who else am I going to lean on? Um, but she couldn't do it. I get that boundary, though. I really do. But to go ahead and block me and act as if I'm just an enemy as well because I need you. And I, I'm trying to see how to talk to my mom or just how to get through to her. It just all blew up in my face. And... It's kind of crazy because the family I've told this to sees my side. And they always tell me, like, why are you protecting her? Because nobody's protecting you. <laughs> and I feel like it's honestly affecting a lot of my relationships. And I don't want it to because that's not me. And I don't want to have this anger anymore. And the more I keep going to church, I keep forgiving it. And that's why I'm like... I forgive her so much that I'm like, I, I'm okay with whatever happens because you chose to do what you had to do and I have to choose what I have to do and what I've been choosing isn't really working out for me. <laughs> Protecting everybody else except for myself is not working out for me. And the fact that like, I waited and I felt like maybe it just needs some time because she's in the middle of this awkward and bad situation. I get it. But to not even follow up a year to say happy birthday, to say Merry Christmas and you like holidays, to not like reach out to me when like family passes away. It's just so fucked up. And I'm just so tired of sitting here silently while they're on social media just acting like it's, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. And I'm done being silent. Um, I don't care anymore because they left me alone and I have been in flight or fight mode. And all because I wanted to protect them in their careers. And I feel like they can clearly do that themselves. I'm speaking up because I'm tired of getting messages. I'm tired of people asking me. 
I'm tired of people accusing me that I don't talk to my mom or that I've separated myself and I really haven't because I reach out to her all the time. I'm just putting this to rest. Um, it is what it is. I have, I am here with open arms and I know that my family has a lot of healing to do. Um, as do I, but I actually have to start healing now instead of waiting for them to come around. Um, please respect my journey and this video and it is not to bring like anything to them. Unfortunately, it's just facts and that's what happened and I'm done being silent. I'm done getting all these accusations and messages. Um, I'm just saying my piece and I'm going to continue what I keep doing and building a life for myself because I have to support myself and provide for myself. And um, yeah, I, oh, I literally wish them well. I miss them and I love them and I wish that we could talk and I hope one day we do. But my life is out in the world and it's always been like that. So I feel like I have to do this, but there you go. Um, I hope everyone... Guerrero actually took to her Instagram to respond to the allegations that her sister Cheryl Lynn made. She confirmed that her sister was essayed, but it was only consistent of inappropriate touching and not the other stuff. However, it doesn't matter what it was. Your sister was essayed by her stepfather. That is horrible, no matter what context you put it in also talked about how they went to family counseling which is fine however why would she go to family counseling with her attacker that is literally re-victimizing her i'll also explain that her sister was very emotionally and verbally abusive to her it got to the point where she couldn't even go to an independent show she was supposed to be working at she did confirm that she did block her sister and also that she would be willing to go back to therapy with her Basically from her statement, what I learned was that one, the allegations are true. And then secondly, her family did abandon her. Chavo actually made a statement on his Twitter. This is what he said. The whole situation is sad. All I can say is that we need to pray for everybody. because Eddie Guerrero is not here anymore. And we see his family literally breaking down. And there's nothing that we can do about it. The only thing we can do is pray that everything gets better. I do think that Vicky Guerrero needs to take some accountability for herself. How dare you stay with the man that attacked your daughter? 